Hello everyone! Welcome back to Dave Mira 2. Uh, I'm in Sedic, with me again is Blank Tester. Hey, how's it going? And this is kind of a throwback, considering, well, I did an LP of the PlayStation 2 version of this game almost five years ago. But the other versions of this game for other consoles, Xbox and GameCube, have two extra levels mm. that, that the PS2 version doesn't have, and I never got around to showing off those. So now it's 2017, and uh, I'm back to Dave Mira 2 on the Xbox, and um, I'm going to show the two off. So this first video is going to be over Greenville. Hmm. Um, is there, uh, real quick, does the Xbox have any Xbox specific? Is it like one for the Xbox, one for the GameCube? Or is it just the two levels on Xbox, same two levels on GameCube, not on PS2? Yeah, that. Two okay. levels are both on Xbox and GameCube. So, uh, I kind of just, you know, I wanted to show them off quick, so I didn't, you know, play through the game leading up to them. I just inputted cheat codes, picked the same rider, but I just, you know, gave him the full bike. And, you know, kind of like in the, you know, kind of like in my normal videos, we're going to show all the challenges in the level. But I just got to say... Maybe it's the Xbox version, but it's probably just Dave Mirror 2. This was not a game I was easily able to just pick back up and play again. I mean, I was about to say, you seem to be doing fine for those first couple jumps. But... Uh, it was, once I actually try to start doing technical stuff, man, it, I forgot how clunky this game was. Like, <laughs> this is going to be the opposite of how, you, you know, like, I, I just went back and finished my Amp 1 LP, you know, showing off the final cinematic or whatever. And I was much more receptive to the game than when I, you know, showed Started. off originally. And this is going to be pretty much the opposite, you know. When I showed Dave Mirror 2 off in 2012, you know, it was a game I remembered as a kid, fondly, as a kid, because as a kid, you know, everything you worked, crazy. Yeah, yeah. You, you worked with what you got. Yeah. And uh, if you played garbage games as a child, you have yeah, mostly yeah. nostalgia for those garbage games. And <clears throat> Sonic Adventure. <laughs> And it was pretty early on in my whole series of showing off all these kinds of games. But now I have, you know, a much broader <laughs> knowledge of what games were able to do back then. And what games are able to do in general. And yeah. this game is so fucking clunky. Like, yeah. maybe it is also the Xbox. Because, like, the D-pad, way better on the PS2, obviously. So, like, trying to mm. slow down, skid or slow down or do specific tricks, it was, like, really tough. Like, one of the... Um, goals in this is going to be like do a specific trick over a jump and you're going to see I do the wrong thing like five times in a row. Mm. <laughs> Not because I don't know better, but here's why I think these levels weren't on the PS2. Because they have interactable parts oh, of the Oh, physics stuff. Yeah. And weird, maybe. I haven't checked the other levels. Maybe there's stuff in the other levels that are in at so least Xbox or GameCube version that the PS2 had to take out. But I don't remember any interactable parts in the PS2 levels that weren't part of a goal. You know? Huh. Like, if you hit something and it would disappear or fall over or something. Like, the PS2 would have those, but I don't think it would have anything like those tables and chairs that you could hit. Mm, that's um, interesting. I, I was never under... The, I mean, I was always under the impression that the, the original Xbox and the PS2 had pretty comparable... Power. It's just that the PS2 sold a lot better and uh, a lot more. There were many more games for the PS2. Well, you mentioned before we started that like there's a few other games where the PS2 version was actually stripped down. Right. Like you mentioned Resident Evil 4. Yeah. When my brother played Resident Evil 4 for the first time on GameCube, and like I remember we got halfway through the game, and then there's this there's this moment where it says, "Please insert disc two," and I was like, "That's." This, why did they put? Why did they just make the disc so small that I could? I, I mean, I bet the PS2 yeah. version has a lot more content. And then I looked, and like the PS2 version has a way less content. There's like an entire side story that's just not in the PS2 game. And like, it, I, I don't know. There's a bunch of content that was. I thought that was yeah. like Resident Evil 4 specific, but it sounds like there are more games that that's the case. Like that's weird. I think Dave Mirror 2 came on one disc for the GameCube and it had these two levels. Hmm. So So it's not even a space restriction there. It sounds like maybe some kind of technical Maybe thing. it is like a performance thing cuz all I can think of is that the, I don't remember the PS2 version having those interactable objects. And I mean, like again, you played the PS2 version when you were a kid. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you enjoyed it as a kid. So leaving those two levels out did not I mean, I think putting those two levels in would have probably just hampered your opinion of the game. It would have it would have just been like, oh well, 
ninety percent of this game works just fine. Um, As a little kid, you thought that. But I, I do have to say one thing, and we've got the volume pretty low, so the mic doesn't pick it up. So I, you know, I can't hear what the music track is. So I'm trying to do like a oh yeah, ta I'm trying to do like a tail whip backflip, mm. and I'm, you know, that's that's it. you know downright down, and I just keep hitting the wrong things, you know, like, yeah. um, but. In the Xbox version, uh, there's the song Paranoid by Black Sabbath, oh. which is in all versions. But in the Xbox version, every time it plays, the game freezes up for a second. Wow. It doesn't completely freeze, but as it's trying to load the next music track in, the game freezes up for a second. Huh. Um, so, I don't know where you'll see. You'll see that somewhere in here. I forget where it plays and I can't hear it, but you will see that. Huh. Um, That's odd. Yeah. That's really strange. I don't remember that in the PS2 I, version. I, I don't know like, why that would like happen. Literally, there's something with the song Paranoid, where when it ends, the game just bungles up for a second. It, to... it could even be disc-specific. Like, maybe on another disc, it wouldn't cause that issue. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. We, we don't know without knowing. But without yeah. checking. But, uh... And we're certainly not going to check. Yeah. But, to get to the level, so... Greenville, South Carolina, actually. Mm. Um... Wait, South Carolina? Yeah, I is think. It, I'm pretty sure it's North Carolina. Oh, did it? I think okay. so. Yeah. Okay, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Greenville. Uh, just like all the other levels, a huge level. Like, mm. well, you know, the, the levels in Dave Nier 2 were so massive. Yeah. Which, again, might have worked better if, you know, the physics worked better or such. But and, I mean, again, it's massive without being, uh, it, to the game's credit, not without being empty. Yeah, there's like, plenty of stuff to do. There's which is nice. Yeah, they definitely separate the different sections pretty well. Like there's kind of that suburbs area. Yeah. There's more of like an actual BMX park in here. Because like sometimes we'll play, we'll see games where like, uh, uh, you know, it's a huge level, massive level, and then like everything is 300 feet apart. So it's like yeah. great. I have a ramp. And nothing. <laughs> uh, I, I remember some of the other levels. And this game doesn't do that. Well, what well I remember some of the other levels in Dave Ramp 2. Maybe getting kind of close to that, like that mm. first level, Woodward Camp. You know, oh, yeah. yeah there was kind of just that side of the level where there was nothing. Yeah. There was just kind of road connecting you back up to the top. Um, but yeah, I mean, this. I mean, usually, like, city levels in games usually are able to find a lot of things for you to do. That's true. Yeah. And I haven't even gone over to the college campus part of the level yeah. yet. Like, I won't say a whole nother half, but there is a whole nother third. Mm. I haven't shown off, but, uh. So, this challenge, you gotta get up in the coffee pot. And then do a 720 no-hander, which I think I'm either gonna fast forward or like fade through. But uh, this is an example of something where it's a little tougher than it should be. Like actually jumping in. <laughs> um, I mean, I get it second try, but again, this isn't the first time playing it. You know, I played through, made sure I knew where all the challenges were, knew what to do, mm. could do them, could do them, and then you know, hit record on the second time. But it was still like, whew. <laughs> yeah, that's one heck of a trick. Kind of crashed a few times trying to get into the coffee pot, and uh, it was like, what the fuck? Why can't I just ride in? Like, you have to jump in over this tiny little lip. Yeah, that's odd. I would have put, like, a little ramp in there. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. With this game, you just need to take more time doing everything. You know, like go back and forth quite a few times to get the air needed or like pause and get a running start to jump up into a thing and again after playing so many other games that aren't even the best of the best i haven't even you know touched the tony hawk games on this right. channel or whatever but after just seeing what a lot of other people can do a lot of other game development studios on a lot of other games around this period in time <laughs> were able to make something that seemed to flow better um like, here's a challenge where you have to wall ride certain sections. And wall riding in Dave Mir 2 was always super spotty. Because either you would, like, straight up get a 20-foot jump and just float, or, like, you would jump, like, an inch and ride yeah. the wall a little bit. Like, you half the time you jump That's and... That's a ridiculous jump. Half the time you jump, go to wall ride, and, like, then bounce off the wall yeah. and not actually do anything. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm, I'm making the game work with me. I'm not working with the game here. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like that. That, yeah. Was, that was an example of all three things. The moon jumping, <laughs> one inch jump, and the <laughs> bouncing off the wall. You just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, whew. I, I mean, yeah, I, I basically kind of have to force something like this. I mean, look and... at that. He's got, like, legs 
like fighter jets, but sometimes he just yeah, like, like takes a little wimpy jump. You can't even use the ramp. Like I try to use the ramp and I get the one inch jump. But that then, is a lot of physics of a lot. But then off the ground. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of like off the ground you get kind of more of the moon jump. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just like all the other levels, there's, you know, the or initial, um, sorry, hold on a sec, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. There's the initial score challenge, and here in the Xbox GameCube, this is the fifth level instead of the water park. So it's right in the middle of all the other levels, so you got to get 50,000 points, and then you do that, you explore the level, and then you get like, what is it, like amateur, hardcore pro, or hardcore pro insane, that was it, and... I remember in the, in Dave Mirror 2, as you went along, the bullshit challenges started happening sooner and sooner. So here, halfway through the game, that coffee uh, challenge is kind of weird. But then here in like the pros or like tier three, this is where you really have some bullshit. Like mm. grind the four claim banners and oh my god, this one is like so weird oh. trying to get. Uh, Again, not oh, my... Oh, and then they respawn you at the bottom, so you have to ride all the way back up. Again, not my first time. I mean, kind of interesting how, you know, like, y you gotta smash the soda machines as well, and when you go to smash that one, it's right next to a gate you can break, and yeah. that's how you get onto the roof. That's awesome. Like, you that's know... That's good game design. That's good game design, because otherwise you might not know, hey, you can smash the gates by running into them. Yeah. Uh, so, like, your momentum just kind of carries you into it. Yeah. Um, you'd have to come in and then stop <coughs> and then rotate around the side and then like you'd have to try to miss the gate like I th I seriously have to say every time I'm slowly riding backwards trying to stop like that's me trying to stop every time I'm slowly riding backwards and fidgeting around and just mm. wanting to turn around <laughs> that's me not having control yeah. of the game like, that's just again something I have to point out where like Ugh, like other bike games, you know, you're able to, if you want to stop, can turn around and go somewhere else. You can easily do that. But yeah, cutting out a bunch of attempts, uh, pretty much, because I had to get it down to a point where I was like, I gotta go for this first, and then if I get that, I can go for these other things. That, yeah, that makes Because, like, I want to waste as little time as possible. Like, if I'm... If, if I, you do that one last and you fuck it up, then you it, better go... You have to do all of them again. Yeah, right? if, so. like, if I miss that banner twice... I'm just restarting. Yeah. I mean, I don't have the time to hit everything else. Yeah. Oh, I think Parano yeah, Paranoid's playing, so pretty much at the end of this run, uh, you'll okay. see the game freeze up for a second. <laughs> at the end of his life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, awkward landing. You know, I was just thinking, you said Hardcore Pro, what was it? Hardcore uh, Pro and... Insane. Insane. And I was thinking, like, what if there was a game, like an extreme sports game, where you play as, like, a someone who's, like... Like, 17. Oh, that was kind of cool. Oh, again, you can't hear it, but, like, doing that challenge causes the marching band to play. Okay. So you're hearing Black Sabbath and, like, a generic college marching ah, band so fight song over each other. So it sounds to me like <laughs> you've just turned this into a DJ Incentic video. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. but, um, the, um, so the idea was, like, what if there was an extreme sports game where you play as, like, a 17-year-old has to decide whether or not he's going to try to go pro or, like, just go do something else, right, for, for the rest of his Sounds life, go like to college or whatever. But, but in the game, you have to, like, go all in and win in order to succeed as a pro. And if you don't, if you don't win, you obviously don't succeed as a pro, and then you just falter and, like, the game just game overs you because oh. you don't make enough money to pay rent or something. But... If you uh, if you don't go all in, then the game game overs you early because you did not try to become pro, <laughs> and instead you get like a menial job. There we go. Wow, that's a lot of like straight up as the song ends, it freezes up for a second. Weird, but yeah, but yeah like you'd you'd like you'd you'd be working you'd be work like in between you'd be working at like FedEx and like. Then at some point you would just get to like level three, and it'd be like, "Oh, you haven't even made an attempt to go pro. Game over." <laughs> yeah, like early, early. Yeah, because otherwise over. it's like I you don't have time. You're a uh, you know yeah you you have work, and you don't have time for your hobbies. Yeah, Dang. you become a manager at FedEx, it's and like... because you're not approaching your your BMX seriously enough, 
You're just out of the game. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> you you said no back then, you'd never get another shot. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, you wanted to be a pro StarCraft player? Well, you kind of have to drop everything to become a pro StarCraft player. Same yeah, way. I mean, if you want to become a pro BMXer, you kind of have to devote a you, lot you know, of time like, to it. They could just, like, you know, those, like, sports management games are kind of, you know, like... That's true. ...coming yeah. back in a way. So, like, imagine you, you mash up, like, the skate games with, a, with one of those management games, except you're managing yourself. You're managing yourself, yeah. Yeah, so, like, the first decision you have to make is to actually try to go pro, and, like, right. yeah, you could just, like, and if you just five it minutes up. into the game, you could just hit, like, you know, no, and go the credits. <laughs> yeah. Um, you could, and, like, you, you make decisions along the way. It's like, how much time do you want to spend this week yeah. working, and how much time do you want to spend on your BMX? And, yeah. like, you have to manage not just... How much money you have? You also have to manage how you, how your parents feel about it because, like, oh, you know, your parents are like, "Yeah, you need to be working," and it's like, "Well, I'm working 20 hours a week and yeah. BMXing the rest of the time," and they're like, "Hey, oh, you shit. can't do that." Like easy mode, you have parents who are super down with. What yeah, you want. they're but like, like, they want you to but be like a BMX hardcore champion. mode. Like your dad, they hate it. They will disown you. Your dad was really expecting that you inherit the mattress store or something. Or oh, I was thinking like become a wow. That <laughs> was upsetting to look at. Um, like, you know, he, he's like, if my son's not a doctor, I don't have a son. And you're like, wow, dad, that's mean. Yeah. Like, uh, come on. Like, I have a dream. And he's like, I don't care about your dream. Yeah. So your like, dream means nothing to like, me. Like, then easy mode, like, can come with benefits. Like, your parents help fund you, get you started. Yeah. But then, like, hard mode, you know, your parents don't help you out at all. And so, you know, obviously, hopefully, you know how to play the game. Because, you know, yeah. you don't just dive in on hard mode. Right, and um, then, of course, the rewards at the end, like, you'd win some kind of unlockable... Except you'd never win your parents' affection. No, no, your parents' affection, on hard mode, you win, never win your parents' affection. Like, on the hardest difficulty, you they just disown you and you never talk to them again. Like, and yeah. you can, there's, like, a button to try to contact them, and it's like, this, they did not pick up. Dang. That's like, or, like, after after a few that's levels... That's fucking sad, After man. a few levels, it says this number has been disconnected. Oh, shit, that's fucking sad, <laughs> <laughs> fucking like good mental crises in your extreme sports. Like it's all, still on the menu, right? Yeah. To like call mom, yeah. call dad, and like yeah. if you go down there on easy mode, it's like, hey, how you good? How you yeah. doing? Yeah. Oh, I saw your big win. Blah blah yeah. blah. But like if you if hard you're mode, on hard mode, just grayed out. they're just no, it's not even grayed out. You can still select uh, it, and you'll hear like the ringing noise, oh and it'll God. just go to answering machine. <laughs> Meanwhile, since you're still on the main menu, you're hearing like a modern pop punk song. You know, <laughs> for the menu music, you know. Like, I don't want to grow up! And, like, yeah, yeah. he's, you know, the dad. What's my age again? What's my age <laughs> again? Like, <laughs> hey, you've reached uh, Dennis, uh, uh, you know, you know. Leave a message. Leave a message. Unless you're my son. Unless, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're <laughs> insanity. <laughs> Like Alright, well, so that was Greenville, and then next we're going to show the other, uh, level that wasn't in the ps2 version we're going to show venice so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you then